Many Christians have asked me if heaven will be boring. I mean, it's forever, so will we just be standing around and singing songs all day? So for those of you who are concerned that heaven may actually be boring, or if you're just curious about what heaven will be like, here are seven facts about heaven that everyone should know. So fact number two, heaven will not have marriage. Luke chapter 20, verses 34 to 36. Jesus answered and said to them, the sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. In this passage, Jesus is answering the questions of the Sadducees, and Jesus tells them something interesting, and it's that marriage is for people on earth, but those who resurrect from the dead won't get married anymore, and they won't be able to die and will be equal to the angels. Jesus speaks a lot about this resurrection, and he tells us in John 5, 29, that people will either have a resurrection of life or a resurrection of condemnation. So those people who have faith and belong to God will rise again from the dead, and when they rise to this new life, marriage will not be a thing. So being straightforward, there will not be marriage between people in heaven. And the reason why I say between people is because God's people are depicted as being a kind of bride to Jesus Christ. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 says that he wants to present the church as a pure virgin before Christ. And in Ephesians 5.25, Paul commands husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church. So while there won't be marriage between people in heaven, there will be a kind of closeness, oneness, and special love that will flourish between God and his people. And this will be somewhat similar to marriage as we see on earth. And for people who have spouses or a dear loved one, I know that the thought of not being married to your partner may be difficult to come to terms with. So I'll try to encourage you with this. God knows all that we will ever need. In fact, back in Genesis, when God created everything, God didn't create Adam until he created a place for him to dwell. And after God created Adam and said that everything was good, God saw that Adam was alone and God said that it was not good. So God created a wife for him. And after Adam and Eve sinned, God did not forsake them, but continued to meet their needs. So the point I'm making here is that God knows us better than we know ourselves and has always provided for the needs of his people. And when he sees the future and all that it holds, God in his infinite wisdom says, mm, my people won't need marriage. So as much as that may hurt us right now, we need to trust God and know that he is bigger than our desire for marriage and that that desire will be fulfilled in another way. Right. Point number two. You guys say I had to pause there because it's for the editing purposes. Thank you very much. Point number two. Heaven will not have marriage. Oh, that's a deep one. OK, so again, we were told all of our life that you need to get married you need to have a partner you know we we want to get married in the presence of god so that we're able to have sex you know and not feel bad about it you know there's people out there who don't really care but anyways we're not going to talk about that we also have to understand that there's not going to be marriage so to me if there's not going to be marriage why would there be sex that's that that defeats a lot of other religions out there I know I'm thinking of um, that says that, oh, you're going to have this, that and the third. You're going to be able to have sex all that you want to. Why would we need to? Why would we want to um, when we're not going to be so fleshly? Number one. Number two, the intentions of sex are within the um, confines of uh, marriage. Number one. So my thing is this. Again, God understands that we want to be um, with somebody, that we want to be have some type of uh, conversation with people, that we want to have relations with people. And that's why. Excuse me. That's why God created uh, Eve for Adam, right? So he understands. So we also have to understand this is that God knows everything that we're going to ever want and need in life. Okay. He, he's going to understand this number one. And number two, that when we do have those things, we're not going to really think about what we don't have. <laughs> you got to understand there's going to be so much good in this world that he's going to create for us in the new Jerusalem. There's going to be so much good. We're not going to, we're going to think about sex. We're going to think about marriage. You're going to be think, thinking about that's really nothing compared to what God is offering. Now you guys have to understand, like, again, there is concern when it comes to that. And I, I feel that concern a lot of times too. You know, I'm in a, I'm in a loving relationship and I, and I just can't fathom not being with them. 
you know but the biggest thing we have to understand is that god has our best intentions in his mind in his heart he's going to show that he's going to he's going to help us to understand that ourselves as well and again we can ask him as many questions as we want to you know we're going to have infinite time with him we're going to be in his presence kind of jump into the next points but i need you to understand yes there is not going to be marriage inside of heaven but you don't have to worry about that okay